Hey guys, it's Brianne from The Hoppy Doxy, and today I'm going to show you how to do wood grain using the new Crystalac inks. So what we're going to need today is first a cup tumbler of some sort that you want base painted a nice kind of chocolate milk color brown. So I got this color just by mixing in some of the number six and number seven pigments, which are the brown and the dark brown, into my universal white base. And I applied two layers with that. If you don't have the pigments, you can start with a universal gray base, or you can start with a universal white base and then add two thin, light, uh, coats of acrylic. I would actually water it down just a little bit so that it goes on nice and smoothly with the acrylic. And if you are using acrylic, that cannot go straight onto the stainless. It has to go over an approved primer base like Universal White. And then you want to let your acrylic dry for about 24 hours. If you're using the Universal White, you can go in after four hours. This has sat overnight. And again, it has two coats. So this is our base. Then we're gonna use the inks. Now, normally I use pigments in addition to the inks, but I did want to give it, in case you don't have the pigments, I wanted to give a tutorial using what you get with the box of the uh, Crystal inks. So we're gonna use number, or not number, I'm used to the pigments, we're gonna use the brown. I'm going to use black. I don't know if you can, these are open, so I don't wanna tilt them too much. We're going to be using white, yellow, and then our red. This will just be a normal brown wood grain. We're not going crazy colors. I'm just going to be tinting our pigments or tinting our inks to create a couple different colors, a different couple different variations of brown. I do have the ink blending solution on hand just in case I need it. And then I also normally use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol at um, this is 99.9%. Um, I think probably 70% or higher is fine. You're not going to have any issues with it pulling out the colors or anything because these are water-based and that's why like with alcohol inks, you don't want to use uh, lower than 70% and really lower than 90% when you're using alcohol inks because of the water involved, but you should be fine with 70%. Again, I'm not sure I'm gonna need that. I normally use it, but I, I'm gonna try and do as much as I can with what you get in the box. And then I have just a paper towel. Uh, I have some index cards. I'm just gonna use the back of them, plain piece of paper. This is just to check my colors when I'm making my mixtures. I don't have a recipe set, so we're just gonna mix the colors as we go. So I'm just going to do that to kind of draw down and get an idea of what the colors are. And then I have my paint brushes. So I have just a really cheap chip brush that I've used for my wood grains before. You want something that's kind of firm bristled that will help with the different wood graining. And then this I actually love. This is a 5 8 inch stencil brush from Craftsmart. It's got a flat top and very firm bristles. I use this a lot for my wood graining, but since it's more people use the chip brush, I also have that. And then I just have a cheap little flathead brush and a little detail brush so that I can go in and make a little bit of details as we're pulling the ink around the cup. And then finally, I have something to mix my colors in. These are super easy to use. You can get them, I think, at the Dollar Tree. Any arts and crafts supply, they're just a um, little palette. And what's nice about them is once your product dries, they just kind of pop out, it makes it really easy to clean. But if you don't have something like this, really anything, like the little condiment cups will work. Um, a lot of times when I'm using the inks, I use the lids of the condiment cups, like these, because I don't use the lids as much. And they kind of, on this part, it's kind of like a grooved area, so you can just mix it in there if you're in a pinch. But really, anything that you need to be able to mix your colors. And I'm checking around... I think that's everything we need to get started. I don't know why I'm moving this. I'm just messing with things in my little. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is mix our colors. So we're gonna start with brown. When you use your inks, make sure that they are mixed really well. So shake them until the colors are totally incorporated. I'm looking at mine. I think all of my other ones are pretty well 
This, I think the brown is the only one I have where the color likes to kind of separate and you get a clear kind of top and then all of the pigment on the bottom. Everything else seems to stay pretty well incorporated when it's sitting on the shelf. Just make sure your color looks really consistent throughout. You're gonna get some bubbles on the top. That's okay because we're using the dropper. The dropper is gonna pull down from the bottom, so. Okay, so we're gonna start. I'm not specifically measuring this brown, but I'm gonna start with about a dropper full in one, get it all out. And that's just gonna be my brown base. I'm not gonna add anything to that. And see with these bubbles, if you want, I'm gonna blow on it. That kind of pops them just a little bit, but that's okay. The bubbles aren't gonna be a big deal. Okay. Then for my next one, let's see, I'm gonna do, I wrote a note to try it, one, two, three, where I'm gonna add colors in. So I'm gonna add just a little bit, less than a dropper full or so. I think it's probably about a dropper full for each of them into three of them. And then I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna use just a little bit of this. So this I'm not um, coloring. I'm just going to use a tiny bit and that's just going to be for some details. Okay, so this is my plain brown. This I'm going to make a dark brown. I'm just going to add one drop of black ink into that one. Again, I'm using the inks and not the pigments. For this one, I'm going to add a drop of white. So that's going to make a darker brown. This is going to make a lighter brown. And then I'm going to just in this one add one drop each of red and yellow. And I think I was looking at, ooh, the American maple recipe for the clear bases to get that. So it's just number six, which basically your brown, your base brown ink is just number six. And then I'm gonna add one drop of each of those. So let me find my stir stick. I like these little silicone stir sticks, but a toothpick, popsicle stick, anything you want will work. Did I grab the black? Or the ah, I did. Okay. It almost looked blue there for a second. Okay. So I'm going to mix these up really quickly just to incorporate. And then I'm going to check on my drawdown just to see where we're at. So that's our darker brown. I'm going to put it in this so you can just compare. So you can see there, here we have just our base brown and there is our darker brown. Focus back down there, okay. Now I'm gonna mix up the light brown. So again, I just about a dropper full of your regular brown and then one drop of black to make it darker, one drop of white to make it lighter. And we'll draw down on that. Let's see, that's not too much different. So let's go ahead and add one more drop of white. So now we're at two drops of white with one dropper full of brown. Now that one made it quite a bit lighter, you can tell. Okay, let me clean this off to make sure I've got the true color. Okay, so you can't, I don't know if it's super noticeable on camera, if it'll focus, there we go. But here's our lighter and that's our normal. So it does definitely look quite a bit lighter here, which is good. Next one, we're gonna mix up this. This was our red and yellow, so one drop of each. And that's in our one dropper full of brown. And I'm gonna make sure this one mixes up really well. Mixing, okay. And then here, we're gonna check. And so that gives us almost, you know, that it is for that American maple. It's actually really close to my color swatch on my wall, so that's great. So now, if we're not looking at this one, we have four different shades of brown, and we have our black, and we haven't used any sort of pigments, we've just been mixing the inks. So. That's gonna really help. Now comes the fun part. Okay, so now we're gonna take our ink and I'm just gonna draw, put my brush into a little bit of it. We're gonna start with the bottom and we're just gonna play. 
So I'm just going to draw some lines. I'm going to draw, dab off my brush. And then as I move my brush into it, it's going to give me color. Now we're going to build on this. So I'm just kind of getting it down first. Um, what was I going to say? If you move it around and kind of push the ink to the side, you're going to get darker lines. It works quite a bit like alcohol ink for this aspect of it. Just being able to push it down. Now we are going to build as this dries, it's going to lighten up just a little bit. So we're going to build it up. But the nice thing is it dries in like 10 minutes. So you can see I'm just kind of playing around. That's all I'm going to do here. So that was our normal brown. I'll go in with our lighter brown and you really don't want very much. Go here. Dab off my brush. Kind of move it around. So that is quite a bit similar to the standard brown. So I'm going to leave that one alone for right now. I'll do the dark brown. I'm getting too much. Kind of take that off a little bit. And just go over it. So if you see when I move this around, I don't know if you can see here, but when I move it around, the rest of the ink kind of moves. And that's when you can use, if you want, you can use the blending solution. Let me show you that. So let's take the blending solution. The blending solution, I have no idea who it is, um, is it's just clear ink. It's the, the Crystallic inks are this plus pigment. So if we just put this in here, you can use it to make your own colors with the pigments, but you can also use it to kind of push around your ink. So I'm gonna just use my thin brush. I'm gonna go back in here and you can see how it kind of displaces the ink that was on there. Kind of re-wets it. So if I made a mistake, I can go back and move it around. And I actually really like this light one for the details. So like if I take a little tiny bit of black, I'm gonna dab it off because I really don't want very much black. And I just do a single line. And then I take my chip brush and kind of blend it in. Then it'll move around. So that's all we do is we're just gonna sit and go through and add some details. I still have some black on that one. And as I go and blend it with my chip brush, it's going to give us those lines again. So the reason that I add rubbing alcohol to mine is because it does help it dry just a little bit faster, which will give you a little bit harder lines. And again, we're gonna build up on this. I'm gonna add just a little bit of the red one. Just add some lines. You can add, so let me put this down. Hopefully this is focusing for everyone. Okay, that's way too much. I wanna make kind of a knot. I can start making my lines, letting it dry. Maybe do a little bit of my darker color for another ring. Try that off, do a little bit of black, gonna dab it. Maybe do that on the outside and then blend it Just a bit with the side of the brush. And that'll be an okay base. We'll go back over that. Got a little hit it with my hand. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing around the rest of the cup and I've got a little drip, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start with my colors and I'm just gonna brush it with my chip brush 
around. Nothing special, just kind of roughly going through with one color. And then I'm going to do our normal brown with the handle. And the handle can be kind of tricky just because you got to get all around it. So I like to just paint the whole thing basically. And then once that dries, I'll worry about getting the details on that one. So I'm just going to go around there. No. Blow on it a bit because I'm going a little bit too fast, getting some air bubbles. If you get air bubbles, you can blow on them to kind of pop them. Um, you can also sand them down a bit, but if you see here, they mostly dry out. So I've got my handle painted. It's starting to dry. So I'm going to go through and move the ink around to give it some of those lines. Then I'm going to take my darker one and do the same thing. So just some different strokes. You can start at the top, the bottom, the middle. We're just going to put some different colors onto here. Then once it starts to dry a bit, we go through it. And if it's spreading too much, it's not drying fast enough for you, that's when you would add your alcohol. Uh, I just do like a drop or two, not too much. But I think you don't need it. Now I'm gonna do my red or my reddish tint. Just working on filling in some of those blank spots. Now the reason that you wanna start with your kind of chocolate milk color base is you'll see that that base actually shows through. So it provides a nice balance. You can do even a darker brown if you want, if you're going for a darker color, but I think that just letting your inks build up works best for the darker colors. So if you see as it dries, kind of the same thing if you've seen my wood grain tutorial with the gel stain, you can just move it around and that ink will kind of deposit around the side of the bristles to make those lines and get some lighter and some darker colors. I need to get in underneath the handle. Oh, hopefully this is focusing okay. I'm not really paying attention to the camera right now. Okay, and then let's do our lighter one. Go back through. Now this one I'm actually going to make into a like a double wood grain peekaboo. So I'm going to keep this base fairly light because I need to go over it with a darker stain color or a darker uh, wood grain color once I get my stencil down. But you can see how it's starting to build. So this first layer, I'm just trying to get some streaks down on the cup. Push my pigment around. Let's get a little bit of a darker one. I apparently have neglected this side of the cup. So let's get that taken care of. Kind of move it around, back and forth, kind of the same thing. Back over this as it's drying. To give us the different colors. So hopefully you can see that okay. Oh, 
That one's got a lot of bubble in it. We'll smooth that out, no problem. So you should be able to tell the different colors coming through. Make sure I get that underneath of the handle. Okay, and then again, let's go in with our clear. I'm gonna to touch this and it's gonna turn black. Nope, not too bad. And then if I wanted to, let's see, take this spot that's a little bit darker and break it up a bit. This acts similarly to just plain rubbing alcohol when you're using alcohol inks. It blends it out a bit, kind of moves it, and it helps to get you those really cool lines that we're all familiar with with our um, wood grains. So hopefully you can see that. It's really kind of cool. These come together really easily. There's not, you know, it takes a little bit of practice because you got to figure out what your brush strokes do. But if you don't like it, just wash it off and start again. Um, if you are totally new to this, then before you go in with these inks, um, after you've painted, put down a layer of bright tone or glitter glue. Well, not glitter glue, sorry. Not glitter glue, because that'll leave it tacky. Uh, bright tone or... Um, we're doing clear here grand finale and that way when you do rinse it off it will protect the paint since that especially the universal white it doesn't have any top coat in it so it can be a little bit more susceptible when you put it underwater but if you do a layer of bright tone or grand finale and let that dry overnight so it sets up a bit then you will be able to rinse it off a little bit easier but if you're not too worried about it if you're a pro you're not too particular then you can go right in with your inks. So you can see, again, you just kind of push this around with the blending solution. You can fill in here. I've got a little bit of a white spot, so I'm gonna take my blending solution and go in there. Pretty simple. Blend this out. If you get those color deposits from the bubbles, you can use this to blend that out. Okay, and then before, make sure this is dry. This is, I put a little bit of too much blending solution. It's trying to move. Okay, now what I'm gonna do real quick is just do a teeny tiny bit of black here and there. And then I'm gonna let this dry for about 10 minutes. And we can go through and add a little bit more if we need to. Just try to do a teeny tiny bit. Because if you do too much, it can be too dark. So I'm just brushing it, kind of blending it out just a little bit. I can go over it again to pick some back up on my brush if there's too much. And then spread that around. Come a little bit more here. This one, I've still got a little bit of light. We'll fill in just a bit. And then even now I can take this and kind of blend this out a bit. See how that's doing. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and while it's drying I should it's actually been fussing with it enough I don't even think I need to turn the video off I think I can just start back with this one again so here we've our bottom has dried our knot is not <laughs> something that I'm loving but I'm gonna just kind of mess around with that and blend it out and then I'm just gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my colors I should have kept this all in the same direction, um, but I didn't blend in my colors until I'm happy with it. Do some darker. 
lines and I think that is good. Again, I'm doing a um, peekaboo over this. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna let this dry out about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll do just a quick second layer to show you what it looks like when it's dry and how it builds. We're gonna try this one more time. My phone keeps stopping the recording. So I got through starting on the handle and the recording stopped and then I went and did a bunch more on the cup and it wasn't recorded, but that's okay. We can recap it real quick and I'll do just a little bit more. So the first thing I did is I did decide to go in and make a little bit of a darker color. So that lightest brown that we had, I added a half dropper full of my regular brown ink to what was left and then two drops of black and mixed that up and I got a darker color. I'll show you on the drawdown. So it's a much darker brown instead of doing it as a black. Now the reason I did that is because we're gonna we're building over the previous colors and so that lightest color is probably not gonna show up over this. So I went ahead and did that and added some darker brown to it. And I'm gonna show you again on my handle because this handle is always the hardest part for me because it likes to deposit in weird areas and it starts to look kind of muddy if I'm not careful. So that one, I'm just gonna add that darkest brown and cover it up. Another thing I talked about is that the Crystal Act inks are going to behave similarly to alcohol inks when you're doing a wood grain. So because I'm doing a peekaboo, I'm not super concerned about the level of detail on this layer, but if you wanted to go like you do with alcohol ink and you just start with a strip and push it around, let it dry, move to the next side or next section and just keep going around and around, you can do that. These inks are not alcohol ink. They will behave differently depending on what you're doing. If you're gonna drop them into wet Crystallac, for example, they're not gonna behave exactly like alcohol ink, but when it comes to the wood grain, they do respond fairly similarly, especially when you're using the blending solution um, and you're building up your layers. The other thing is if you can see here, I didn't pay attention because I was talking to you guys when I was doing this top and I have some darker color here. This isn't going to matter so much. I'll be able to blend it out because I'm going to do a peekaboo with a whole other layer over it. But if you see that, you can take your blending solution and just kind of blend it out. I don't want to at this point because it'll mess up some of the other parts of the cup that I have. But you can do that or you can even just take a paper towel with a little bit of water and kind of dab it out and then blend in your color over it. So it's pretty forgiving. And then here what I did is I started with one of the lighter color inks and I can build this a little bit because this isn't where my pattern's gonna go. And I can just do a little bit, dab this off and let it dry of this lighter color, kind of in like an oblong diamond-ish shape blowing on it just to get it to dry a little bit so I can push that color around. Then I can start with my next darkest and go around the edges, kind of blending that together. And then I can take that newest dark, dab that off a bit. And while it's still wet, go over the edge. I can even get a little bit in the middle over the edge again and now I have kind of more of like a not necessarily I mean it is like a knot just not a little one it's one of the bigger knots it's not a knot and then you can take your black even and just add a little bit more of that veining into it so you can see now, this is basically my third layer of ink. It's a little bit darker. Well, it's quite a bit darker because it's still drying uh, than the rest of the cup. So it will build as you do it. And you really only need to let it dry like five to 10 minutes just until it's dry um, to be able to go over it. You don't want to keep messing around with it and getting it super, super wet. So just let your ink dry each layer and then it can build as you want it to, and you can move stuff around 
that way. So you can definitely get a lot of different color with it. This one, I accidentally put some brown into my blending solution, but I'm gonna, I got a little bit of a muddy group look going. So I'm gonna just take my blending solution and that's gonna kind of lighten it up a little bit. And then the other thing I talked about is adding your clear coat. So this finishes, it's over your base. It's kind of like a matte finish. Um, I don't know exactly that it's matte, but it's not glossy. So once you add your gloss top coat to it, it's going to kind of brighten it up and give it a little bit more of a richer color. And so I will show you that in a minute. So with these inks, and I'm just kind of going through and playing around with it, it's a lot of fun to just let things build. Right now I've got some of the blending solution on the brush, and that's going to move the inks around just a little bit. Let's see. Don't want to mess it up, but we'll see if I can. I think this is too dry at this point to blend it out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, once you want to do like really to be safe about 10 minutes in between each layer and then allow it to dry for an hour before you go in with your clear coats. Now you do not need to seal this with anything else. Your, um, your top coat is your sealer. So don't worry, you don't need to put glitter glue over it. You don't need to spray it with a UV sealer or an ink fixative. It's water-based, it's designed to work right with Crystalac. You can go right in with your top coat after it's dried for only an hour. So no more gassing off like with alcohol inks or spraying it, all of that. And it'll be perfectly good to go. You don't have to risk the cracking that can sometimes happen with Bombay inks. Just make sure you keep your layers light and give them plenty of dry time, you know, plenty is 10 minutes in between your layers as you build it and then let it dry for an hour. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing with this because I do have to put darker colors over it and I don't want it to get too dark. So I'm gonna let this dry for an hour and then I'm gonna put some clear coat over it and I will show you once that's dry what this cup looks like just with one layer of grand finale over it. Here is our cup after just one layer of grand finale. You can see it's got that nice glossy shine and it has added a little bit of richness to the color. And of course, if you wanted to continue to build over your layers, you could. This has got that nice richness to it. Um, I'm ready now to add my stencils to do my double wood grain, but you are good to go now just to keep building your layers. You only need three to six layers total of grand finale or uh, six layers minimum for bright tone to be able to finish this cup. Of course, if you wanted to add vinyl decals to it or anything else, you could at this point. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I am more than happy to help you out. Also, make sure you join the Facebook page for Crystalac and show me those cups that you make with your Crystalac inks using this wood grain technique. I would love to see them. I'll put a link to that in the comments of this video. Otherwise, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I will try and do more videos. It's been really busy lately, but I wanted to get this one out and show everyone how I do my wood grains with these new Crystal Lack inks. Thanks, guys.